So, so Bill, uh, yeah. the jobs numbers today, 3.9%. Yeah. I haven't seen that really covered very much on, uh, there's still, you know, no, the Giuliani reason- throwing Trump's legal team into disarrays on CNN right now. Yeah, the re- the reason it went down from four to three point nine is that Stormy Daniels is now on the road uh, <laughs> doing cabarets. <laughs> that 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 dropped it down to three nine. <laughs> so, what do you think? Of, what do you think about the Cohen story this week with Stormy Daniels and and Giuliani coming out and 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 the press saying he made a horrible mistake? And, and re- this was a brilliant move by Giuliani. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, as you know, because you. Uh, study our analysis on BillOReilly.com. The reason Giuliani did this was because of the raid on Michael Cohen's office. Um, in that raid, they took off all his documents, which clearly show that Cohen wrote a check for $130,000 to Stormy Daniels. So that story was going to come out. Mm-hmm. The uh, president knew it. Giuliani, who's a new head lawyer, knew it. So they, they said, look, we got to get out in front of this. We got to say this. We can't allow uh, a leak and, and all this business. So that's why Giuliani went on Hannity in a number of ways. I mean, his main focus was to demonize James Comey, but the secondary focus was to say, yeah, she got paid out of retainer funds. I, okay, Bill, Bill I, because I know you keep up with you know my commentary at glennbeck.com. Um, <laughs> so you know that one of the main things that this did was, and I don't think this is inconsequential is it took the liability off of Cohen because Cohen was in trouble. Uh, and this said, no, 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 he didn't. I paid him back. So it wasn't campaign finance. It, it wasn't any of those things. So it really no, was no, a, right, right, an right, olive right. branch maybe, saying, hey, stick with us. Maybe, but I think the more important thing was they wanted to define it, that it was paid by this is the key, retainer funds. When you hire an attorney, the attorney says, look, I want your house, your boat, your car, and your uh, third child, and then I'll take on the case. So you have to give them money up front. That's a retainer. So Cohen was getting, I think, a monthly retainer from Trump, and he used this, according to Giuliani, some of that money to get Stormy Daniels off the radar screen. Um The story is basically that Stormy Daniels alleges a a one-night stand with Trump way back, you know, 12, 13 years ago, and she wanted money to shut up. All right, that's blackmail, that's extortion, media doesn't care about that. And they gave her a little bit of money because it was coming close to the presidential election. They didn't want this woman running around with her attorney, so that's what happened. So the voter can decide for his or herself whether that's a worthy thing to do you know, whatever. But the press is using this, obviously, to say, well, Trump said he didn't know anything about the payments. He's a liar. And, and Sarah Sanders is a liar. Everybody's a liar. You know, I, you know, I have to, usual. Bill, I, I can't right. take this is almost in many ways the same story as the Clinton thing. He, uh, you know, Clinton came out. He lied about the affair. Then it came out that he was lying. Then he said, well, I was only it was a personal thing. I was only trying to save my wife. I mean, Donald Trump can say the same thing here. And, you know, half of the country is going to care. But that was the half that didn't care under Clinton. And the other half is not going to care. And they were the half that did care. So, I mean, it's going to have the same outcome, is it not? Well, I don't know about the outcome, but it, there's a difference between because uh, Clinton's actions toward Monica Lewinsky was when he was in the Oval Office, when he was in the yes. White House, and Trump was way, way back when he was a builder and had no right. political aspirations. But and he was, um, and he also lied under oath, where Trump did not lie under oath. Not yet. I mean, yes, because that's what the Mueller thing is all about. Yes, the, the perjury trap. Um, it's it's look. What bothers me about all this is that the country is being damaged by somebody like Stormy Daniels and her attorney. And I I, I think the president has to understand that, look, this is hurting the country. It's not about you anymore. It's about us. Because you've got North Korea, you've got Iran, you've got the. This hurts the stock market every day. The stock market now wobbles because they don't know. What's going to happen to the president? And, and so the stock market, which should be uh, stable and growing, is now wobbling. And that hurts 
everybody who holds equities. So it's now becoming something that I think the president's going to have to say, enough, enough. I'm going to answer the questions the way I believe they should be answered. As I said, I would never in a million years uh, go in under oath to, with Robert Mueller. In a million years, I would never do that. Because I know Trump. Trump doesn't remember from one week to the next what's happening. He just doesn't remember. All right? It is impossible for him to answer these questions. He's, he's, his attention span is short. He's not the guy that writes in a diary. He doesn't remember. But he'll say anything that comes into his mind. <laughs> All right? It's a, it's a, no, no, I know it's an interesting it's an interesting place to be. Okay, when we come back, because you are in uh, New York, I want to talk to you a little bit about what the governor of New York has done with the NRA and the financial district. It's phenomenal. Coming up in a second. Glenn Beck Mercury. president is Dallas today to uh, speak at the NRA convention. We're uh, pleased to have the NRA uh, here in the great state of uh, Texas. Uh, Bill, he just spoke before he got on to uh, Marine One, and he said um, Rudy Giuliani is a good guy, but he'll get his facts straight, which is a kind of a, an interesting turn. He said also that they will fight this, uh, if there's a subpoena, all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, and they are not, they just took your advice. They're not going to testify. Well, it's a smart play. Um, the Giuliani remark was he's uh, insinuating that Giuliani did not have his facts straight when he talked to Hannity. Is that what you took out of that? That's what I took out of it. I, have, I don't have uh-huh. the full context of it yet, uh, but he did say he's a great guy. And uh, he just uh, started yesterday, and yeah, I'll get his facts straight. To get his facts straight. All right. So they're trying to spin whatever damage they think they've uh, Weird. incurred here. Um, look, I just wrote a message of the day for BillOReilly.com, and it's a pretty simple message. And it was written for the executive branch. Just tell the truth, you know, yes. even if it's painful. Yes. Um, because you can't keep this chaos up. The strategy now that people should understand is to wear Trump down so he cracks. All right. Wear him down. And every day have some other mini scandal every day, impugn his honesty or whatever you want. This is the media strategy. Mm -hmm. All right. And so you make it impossible for him to focus on the governance and you psychologically damage him so that he's just crazed. I mean, I don't think people understand Beck. You and I, of course, do, because we've been in the eye of the storm for many years. Um, the toll it takes on people like Sean Hannity to be called a slumlord, uh, people like me uh, to be accused of things that I didn't do, people like you uh, to be boycotted or whatever. It takes a psychological toll. It does. It's not like you can just go out to 7-Eleven and say, I don't give a flip. OK, especially when it's it's organized and it's uh, it's hateful and it hurts your children and your friends I mean, I think it took 10 really years. Is. I think it took 10 years off my life. I really do. I look at myself it, 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 in the mirror today right. and I'm not the same man. And that well, and but that's a good thing, Beck, that you're not the same guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it does. OK, so but 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 so so everybody knows that we know what the media is is doing. Uh, and we see how many times the media has been wrong. I've got a I've got a whole list of all the things the media has gotten wrong and proclaimed this is the end of Trump because this and they were wrong about it and had to go back of and course, correct but they it. Don't care. Right? They don't care. Why would they? No. So, but wait a minute. Hang on just a second. So, how is this? How do you think this will play out with the average person? Because I think the average person they bought in. If you bought into Donald Trump, you know, okay, that's the kind of guy he is. Okay, the Stormy sure. Daniels thing. If it happened, it happened. If it didn't, it didn't. That's already baked into the price of Donald Trump. Uh, and for him to lie about it, if if he is indeed lying about it, if he was lying about it and it comes out that he was lying, he's causing his own 
issues yeah. here. And, he can just move on. That's the message of the day on BillOReilly.com. Look, if you if you pay, look, there's no question she got paid. Right. Right. So that you gave her money because you, you didn't want four days before the election. And this woman timed it because that's what extortionists and blackmailers do. I'm not saying that she's won. I don't want to be hauled into court by her lawyer. Um, but I'm just saying that the timing of, of these kinds of accusations was, was not coincidental. Paramount. Yes. Right. So, you know, I want to be clear, not, not calling her a blackmailer extortionist. I'm saying that the, this happens all the time to powerful and prosperous people in America all the time. All right. So you with Trump, he's just got to basically sit down with Giuliani and his other counsel and he's got to prepare a statement that's true. And and that's it. And you're right. His base isn't going to flee him because of this. All right. They're not just like Nixon's base wouldn't have fled him on the Watergate thing. Yes. All right. But you get deeper and deeper and deeper. And now you have an organized media that is devoted to destroying you. So know that. And your only your only defense is the truth, even if it hurts. Will it if it goes through, goes all the way to the Supreme Court and then he does have to admit it, if indeed it is true. I'm not saying that it is at this point, but if if it is true, he goes all the way, he fights it. Do you think that even shakes his base at all? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. No, I think if he explains that I can't possibly remember all the things that Robert Mueller, we don't know where he's going to go. We don't know what Mike Flynn has yeah. said to him. We don't know any of this. And I can't get in a position where I'm grasping for things that I'm not sure about. Yeah. Okay. So I will answer written questions. That's what you do. BillOReilly.com. As we continue with Bill O'Reilly, we'll talk a little bit about the NRA and the state of New York next. Glenn Beck. Mercury. Glenn Beck program from New York State from dfs.ny.gov Department of Financial Services press release Governor Cuomo directs Department of Financial Services to urge companies to weigh reputational risks of business ties to the NRA and similar organizations New York may have the strongest gun laws in the country but we must push further to ensure that gun safety is a top priority for every individual company and organization that does business across the state. Therefore, I am directing the Department of Financial Services to urge insurers and bankers statewide to determine whether any relationship that they may have with the NRA or similar organizations sends the wrong message to their clients and their communities who often look to them for guidance and support. This is not just a matter of reputation. It's a matter of public safety working together, and we can put an end to gun violence in New York for once, uh, once and for all. DFS is encouraging regulated entities to consider reputational risk and promote corporate responsibility in an effort to encourage strong markets and protect consumers. Now, this has already been uh, taken by MetLife and Chubb. Chubb just got rid of its uh, discounted uh, program, on concealed carry insurance. We also know that Bank of America and Citigroup have already kowtowed and they have started to change their relationship. Bank of America said no financial services to gun manufacturers uh, or gun sellers that make uh, high capacity magazines or guns that fire high capacity magazines, including semi automatic handguns. That care that can hold more than ten rounds, Bill. Yes, this is just a way to get around the constitutional argument. This is 
totalitarian government um, squeezing the banks. What, what, do you, what do you think they mean uh, you should check into your reputational risk? Um, well, the real intent here by uh, Governor Cuomo is to boycott. It's like the sponsor boycotts in the media. They want uh, any companies that do business with the NRA to be punished economically. So that's where you start. All right. So it was successful, uh, the boycotts in the media. So now the politicians are saying, well, we can do the same thing with outfits that we don't like. All right. Like the NRA. And the subtext to it in New York is that Cynthia Nixon, uh, the actress who actually played Nancy Reagan in the movie Killing Reagan, um, is running against uh, Cuomo in a Democratic primary. And she's, you know, a socialist. She's very far left. So he's doing a lot of things to please the left. And this is one of them. So it's a cynical exercise. Uh, but, this, but this is really a lot of the com- a, lo- a lot of the companies that you mentioned do business with the state of New York. And that's the other thing. Correct. They're saying if you if you do any um, anything with the uh, NRA, you're not going to do business with us. So here's what well, here's what just happened. This 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 was just issued by the state of New York. The Department of Financial Services has fined locked-in companies seven million dollars for underwriting NRA branded carry guard insurance. Now, what carry guard insurance is uh, is if you are uh, if if you have to shoot somebody. Uh, they cover your bail. They cover the fees. They they do everything they can to make sure that you are protected, that you can not be financially destroyed by a charge that maybe you're innocent of. They've just yeah, filed that. Offense, right? They have just locked in, agreed to pay a seven million dollar fine because they were part of this this insurance. A seven million dollar fine. Well, that's going to send a message throughout the entire financial industry. I can't do anything that it covers insurance for guns. That will kill the Second Amendment. You know, it's uh, what has to happen is they have to then bring it in and say this isn't uh, this isn't a legitimate point of government. This is the argument has to be made in court of law that this is coercive and it's against the Second Amendment and it's designed to make it impossible for people to exercise their Second Amendment rights. So that's what has to happen. I assume it'll happen. I think but who will? A lot, the who, a lot of lawyers. Yes, but who will have who will have standing in that? You know, and and will they be brave enough to come through in Illinois? They're now talking in one town about confiscating all of the guns. Um, they're having yeah, they a hard... to do that in D.C., remember? Yes. And in D.C., they've lost. They've lost. <laughs> yes, but times, wow. times are different now, and they're having a hard time finding people. All of the people that, were, uh, that are being named in this lawsuit, they're all Jane and John Doe. Nobody's willing to put their name on it because, I mean, and it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. We're just going to come in and seize your property? Are you going to search my house for it? Uh, it's a violation of the Second Amendment. Uh, and they're having a hard time finding people who are willing to stand up because they know their life could be destroyed and their lives are in danger if they, if they stand against this. Listen, Beck, this is a fight to the end on the Second Amendment. So there are, I, I think, more Americans who support the Second Amendment, according to polls, than don't. Yes. So the NRA and other groups have to say, this is what's happening. All right. Here's what's happening. So we have to fight against it. And it's in I've always said this in the end, it's what the people are going to want. They're not going to be able to overturn the Second Amendment. That'll never happen in America. It's a constitutional thing. And they're never going to get that out, the amendment out. So they're going to try to strangle it economically, just as they do on television. And, you know, the the proponents of the Second Amendment are going to have to fight it. It's a brawl. Uh, Bill, anything on your list? I mean, I, I've got a couple of other things on your list, but anything on your list that you think was important this week that we haven't touched base on? 
Well, I think that, you know, you have a, a system now of a total collapse in the media. I think we've gone over that on this program. Um, but it's now starting to take, you know, shape in, in, a, in a more dramatic form. So no longer is the media, and this is really interesting, they don't pretend anymore that their goal is not to report facts to the folks. It's to get Trump out of office. Yeah, you know when That's I was when cool. I was at when I was at Fox, uh, Sarah, do you have the uh, clip from Hillary Clinton? I think it was from yesterday or the day before, where she was talking about the Iowa caucus. Um, you know, when I was at Fox, I said there's going to come a time to where they're all just going to take the mask off. You know, there it was. It was when Newsweek said we're all socialists now, and I said, wait a minute, no, we're not. What does that mean? <laughs> and and they and they they immediately you know went back and then everybody said oh that's just a that's just a racist term you know you're just by saying you're a socialist you're just it's basically you're a racist here's what Hillary Clinton admitted to just two days ago when she was making a list yet of more people that caused her to lose listen to this you, you may be the only uh, presidential candidate since World War II that actually had to stand up and say, I am a capitalist. <laughs> uh, and you did. Uh, did it hurt you? Probably. I mean, you know, it's, it's, hard, <laughs> it's hard to know. But I mean, if you're in the Iowa caucuses and 41 percent of Democrats are uh, socialists or self-described <laughs> socialists, and I'm asked, are you a capitalist? And I say, yes, but with appropriate regulation and appropriate uh, uh, accountability, uh, you know, that that probably gets lost in the, oh, my gosh, she's a capitalist. I, I mean, listen to that. Here's a here's the Democrats well, I, saying 41 percent are self-described socialists. You know, it, it is an amazing phenomenon that so many Americans believe that Venezuela is a good place. <laughs> you know, I mean, just take a ride down to Caracas and take a look around or go to Havana. You can't go there anymore, but get on a cruise ship. They'll dump you there for a day. Um, go to China and just, walk, you know, go out of Shanghai and Beijing and walk around a little towns. So it is amazing how that people are so stupid that they think socialism um, is uh, a system that would bring prosperity because it will not. The other thing I saw this week that uh, was the millennial study on religion by Pew. Did you see that? That uh, Americans ages 18 to I think it's 42 uh, have just abandoned religion. Just, they just, you know, they don't believe in the quote unquote God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the God of the Bible, of course, is a God that interacts with human beings. When you pray to the God, um, the God is, uh, aware of you and your life and your struggles and your trials. That's the God of the Bible. Little millennials don't believe that 65% of them don't believe that. Okay. So now you combine that with the socialism and you're getting into atheistic socialism, yeah. which, of course, is communism. And, you know, for aware people to see how the country is changing, it all goes back to what you said at the beginning of the hour, the education system, that these kids are being indoctrinated. Well, capitalism's bad. Republicans are bad. White people are bad. Men are bad. OK, I, I, and we, you know, we really have to fight against it. So you don't want to be in the bad place. And if you're a guy, then you have to woke. See, if you they, they're giving the guys a way out back. If you woke, then you're OK. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah so right. It's like the invasion of the body snatchers. Sure. OK, so here they come. Are you woke? Isn't it amazing I mean, that you're, you're you have to up, right. you have to be dead right. asleep? they've just taken the language and flipped it upside down. You have to be dead asleep to all of the facts and common sense and reason to gather and get the, get the term woke uh, applied to you. You're dead asleep. Yes. Bill, when, uh, when, uh, I don't know if you know uh, Jacob Hine or heard his story, but he is a guy who, uh, a kid, eighth grader, uh, who had to translate a story in his Spanish class, so a news story. So he took a news story from Fox News. His teacher uh, uh, really just bullied him in class, uh, lectured him in class, uh, and, uh, and, and just yeah. mocked and ridiculed him for using Fox News yes, as a source. Fox News is fake news. You can never use that as a source ever again. It was, and really embarrassed the kid in front of his class. Yeah.
uh, I have his dad on uh, next hour. You have to listen to it. But uh, do, you, do you, can you think of any reason why that would happen in a Spanish class? Isn't it <laughs> just the translation? Well, teach? I, you know, you're, you're anti-Hispanic. If you want a, uh, you know, any kind of controls on immigration, then you, you just don't like the Hispanic people. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know if Americans understand how dramatic the changes are in this country and how the people who are trying to stop this madness are being destroyed and picked off one by one. Don't know if they, you know, look, Fox News is right. Fox News is not nearly what it was five years ago. Nope. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Dramatic changes. Dramatic. And that's the last line of defense in the media is no one else. So you're seeing it. It's happening before your eyes in 2018. Um, the bad guys, in my opinion, are winning. Um, is that cycle irreparable? I don't think it is. I think that you can swing it back because the instincts of most Americans uh, recoil when they see this. So you still have the folks, but the organized politicians, media, education system, it's unbelievably damaged at this point. 